game we will... started. Wow, paired very quickly. And I'm playing none other than uh, Lei Kuang Lim, Grandmaster for Vietnam, who is also recording uh, a DVD for this series. So let's try our best. And let's try to get off on a good foot. So we've got an English defense going. And it's kind of a theoretical position. Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing here, but in Blitz it's important to play quickly. And, and hopefully to play accurately, but that's less important. <laughs> Okay, let's try to get some counterplay going. So, got an interesting position here. I've got some queen side play, he's got some king side play, so not too surprising there. King h1 is just Looking to tuck his king away somewhere safe. Let's take this opportunity to develop. Let's continue developing. And I kind of want to play knight e4 here and bother him a little bit. So knight e4, he's intending c4. Let's continue in the same vein. Well, let's continue applying pressure <laughs> and annoying the heck out of him. Okay. So let's see. I'm threatening to take on c3. I like my position. And in blitz, things tend to, to turn, you know, tables tend to turn very quickly. So, you know, I've got to be careful not to not to let this advantage slip. With that said, let's just take the pawn. 95. So he's I might have already let it slip. He's intending rook takes e5, bishop d4. And the rook is pinned and it's a fork. So oh, but I see something. I see something nice here. If bishop d4, I can play b4, and I can simultaneously defend both rooks. Now, defend here is a relative word. I mean, I'm not truly defending the rooks, but I'll have two pieces. And he, he he tries to muddy the waters here. So why don't I go back? I could, Oh, but going back, he, he might take on f6, which is annoying. So I can go to b5, I can go to e6. Let's play solidly. Go to e6. Let's go to e6. Okay. a3, interesting. He's allowing me to take like this. And is he allowing rook b3? Does this work? Ah, uh, whatever. I think I'm just going for it. <laughs> you know, great thing about blitz. And the reason I love it so much is, is there's nothing to lose. So you you just play moves, and, and if you lose, if you miscalculate, it's not the end of the world. And that's not to say I haven't broken any objects after having lost the Blitz game. I have. But when all is said and done, the bigger picture is that you can do whatever the heck you want with with no risk. Yeah, Rook's, Bishop c3 isn't very nice. Um, he salvages some material, but... Of course, he's still lost. We just got to be very disciplined with the technique. Okay, that was quite a large ear scratching, but I don't know. My ear is so itchy. Anyways, <laughs> let's take this opportunity to be safe and take a make a small hole for our king. Don't want to succumb to any back rank mates, even though bishop a6 might have been more effective. Okay, bishop a6. Ooh. Some 94 stuff going on there too. All right, let's go bishop a6. And I see three. Okay, that was impulsive. Yeah, I missed this, but I can go queen b3 maybe. And okay, is he threatening this stuff? Is he truly threatening it? I don't think so. I think I can just go 92. Bishop H3. Time warning. Okay, yeah, time warning. Thank you. So he wants to play queen f8 and bishop f5. Incredibly tricky. But I think I'm just going to go back and I think I'm still completely winning. Yeah, takes. Okay, is there a checkmate here? Uh, let's, not, let's not lose on time. Should be two. Okay, and I see Check. how to win a queen. I'm more than good with that. And he resigned. So we did get off on a pretty good 
foot here, beating uh, Le Quang Lim. And let's start the next game. So while we do that, my, my goal here is that I don't know how long it will take to, to start the next game. It might be five seconds, it might be 15, it might be a minute. So I'm just going to review the, the previous game and sometimes I'm going to share some thoughts about Blitz Chess and uh, my approach to, to Blitz and, and whether I recommend Blitz, so stuff like that um, I will be talking about during uh, the intermission times between the games. So this game started off, you know, in a rather vanilla fashion, let's say, within English. And the thing about these positions, English positions in general, is that um, black needs to be very, very active on the queen side because if he allows white to, and I don't know if I can make errors here, I guess not, but yeah, I can actually. If black allows white to, to start pushing these pawns, he'll end up in, you know, huge trouble very fast. And that's why I tried to break through on the queen side with c6 and b5. And without wasting any time, I think he might have, he might have been a little bit too slow with this move king h1. It allowed me to, to put some pressure on the c pawn. And here he found a nice tactic, but I found a nice response uh, playing b4. So notice that this rook cannot be moved uh, because of uh, the queen, because of the pin. Um, and, and he's also attacking this rook, so it looks like a, a fork. It looks like he's going to win the exchange. But in fact, I have this very powerful reply b4. And if he takes one of my rooks, then... Um, you know, this is just bad, of course, to get two pieces for, for the rook, and I got total domination. He probably should have done something like this, but this is still, after something like queen b5, it's still probably winning. Uh, instead, he, he tried to muddy the waters, but I found this, this move, rook b3, traded a pair of rooks, and basically the game is over now. Queen b3, yeah. And in the end, I found a way to win the queen, and he resigned because after bishop g2, I have knight f2 check, and he's got to give up the queen on a7, so... That's how the game went. So let's return back to the home screen. And um, yeah, it still hasn't paired us, so we can take this opportunity to just talk a little bit. So Blitz Chess. Um, I am addicted to Blitz Chess, and, and that's, you know, that's just me. And I don't recommend for you to be as addicted as I am. I play Blitz almost daily, even when I can't quite afford it. Even if I have homework, I still end up playing. Um, but I think... The, the thing about Blitz is is that some grandmasters like Mihail Botvinnik were against his students playing Blitz and he said it's very harmful, it's a waste of time, it develops these impulsive abilities, or these these impulsive tendencies rather. Uh, other players like Mihail Tal or Gary Kasparov swore by Blitz game and, started. and we've started the game so let's hold off this conversation until uh, we finish this game. Let's start with G4. Uh, e6, okay, let's transpose to the French. I quite like playing both uh, with and against the French. Um, I usually play the Tarash with white, so let's play our theory. Knight gf3. This is the fashionable line, a5, castle, g6. So he's he's mixing up two lines, right? Because g6 is a line before a5, or a5 is a line. And generally speaking, in these positions, white just wants to play rook one Knight f1, knight g3. I don't know if I can make arrows. No, I can't make arrows during the game, so that's okay. Knight g3. Okay, he's attacking my pawn. Let's take it. And this might look um, this might look a little bad because this pawn is somewhat weak, but it's it's not like he, he he's going to attack it. I mean, after I put a bishop on f4 which is exactly what I'm going to do, he can't continue to attack it. And I think I'm slightly better here. Okay. Congratulations. And let's... I'm tempted to play h4. I also like queen d2. Let's play h4. I think my attack is stronger than his. Okay. Yeah, before h5, I was expecting this. And, okay, rook b8. And generally, I'm, you know, a little bit biased because I prefer the initiative in blitz. You know, there are some blitz players who play very positionally, even in blitz. I, my style tends to become a lot more tactical in blitz. Um, and generally speaking, I'm more positional, I think, in real chess. But in blitz, I, you know, no holds barred in everything. I just go for the throw usually. So let's go bishop f6, try to create some nice mating threats if I can get rid of that annoying bishop he has. And he's very busy searching for Bobby Fischer, his 
unfortunately dead by now. But it's entirely possible that he made this account when Bobby Fischer was alive. Because ICC has been around for many, many years. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to gladly capture this pawn. And now he is in trouble. <laughs> there are some other words I could have substituted there, but you know, for the for the sake of our viewership, I will I will restrict myself. I see okay, I see a nice combination. H6. Now if he takes my bishop, then I've achieved my aim, right? And if he doesn't, I'm gonna play queen f4. And the reason I could have taken immediately, but 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 now I'm threatening to take and then play queen f6, queen g7, checkmate and he can't stop me. So again, I think it's time is ripe for him to resign. Let's see what he does. He's, he's deep in thought, or he's on his way to Iceland. Well, I think while I'm finishing him off, I can continue um, where I left off. And I was mentioning that some players are uh, proponents of Blitz and others are, um, how should I put it, uh, detractors or they, they think Blitz is uh, not, not something serious players should pursue. And in terms of my own view, I stand somewhere in the middle. I think when Blitz becomes an obsession and when it stands in the way, when, when, it, when it replaces other stuff, like opening training or tactics training, that is when Blitz starts becoming harmful. That is when you should reconsider the amount of Blitz you're playing. Now, uh, if you're playing you know, a, a fair amount, but you're not going overboard, maybe a few games a day, and you, you are taking Blitz very seriously, and that is, and he resigned, so let's enter the pool while I'm continuing to talk. If you're playing Blitz in, in decent amounts, um, it can actually be extremely beneficial. And that is purely my opinion. This is not scientifically supported or anything like that. Uh, but my opinion is that is that when you're playing Blitz and you are fully concentrated, uh, you don't have any other tabs open, you're not watching a movie at the same time, when you are orchestrating that kind of environment, um, playing Blitz can really foster the kinds of abilities that will help you and progress uh, in a real game. What are those abilities? Well, for one thing, um, Blitz really forces you to train your intuition because quite simply there's no time to process all of the variations. So at some point, even if you're a, per a perfectionist, you, you have no choice but to, um, but to trust your intuition because you don't want to lose on time. Um, in terms of tactical training, Blitz can also be very good. And here I must stress that it all depends on how seriously you are playing. If you're kind of screwing around at the same time, and you're playing Blitz just to kill time, then obviously you're playing very superficially and that can actually hurt your chess development because again, if you're playing a lot of Blitz, you are naturally uh, developing certain tendencies that might either be beneficial or they might be harmful. But if you are taking it seriously, um, then uh, you're also forcing yourself to be on your heels at all times and to calculate as much as you can because uh, the mark of a successful Blitz player is to be able to calculate, um, you know, as much as possible. If you do that, then you maximize your chances of uh, not blundering and out-calculating your opponent during a blitz game, which is probably the most important element. Um, what else does blitz train? It can train any abilities, really, because um, if you model, if you if you kind of, uh, you know, how should I put it? If you if you assume. Game. Started. And we started the game. I, I was. Well, I wanted to say that if you assume uh, a real environment, a real tournament environment, when you're playing Blitz, then you can really put some pressure on yourself. So Knight of Three. Let's play D5. We are playing International Master Igor. Uh, that's his handle, of course. I don't know what his real name is. So let's go Bishop F5. This is an interesting variation that I've played before in Blitz. Knight C6, and it's a little bit superficial. My idea is to play Knight B4, and he immediately locks up the center, which is uh, not too bad for me, I think. So night before, there's queen a4 check. Um, I'm he hesitant about playing b6. I don't want to weaken this knight. So let's just develop. When in doubt, develop. Okay, develop. Castle. Okay, he probably wants to take. I think now I can go knight b4, yeah? Now I can go knight b4. He castles. So he doesn't really care about knight c2 anymore. 
Um, I can go b6, but then then uh, he would have played a3. So I'm going to play a5 in order to be able to return with my knight to a6. And I realize that I'm playing in a bit of a unorthodox, um, crooked fashion almost. But, you know, in Blitz, again, there's no beauty prizes. You, you, you win if you win, and you lose if you lose. And the result is the only thing that counts in Blitz. So, of course, you want to get some training in as well. Okay, so let's go ninety seven. Trade off some pieces. Could have probably taken on e five, but not that important. Okay. Generally, I like seeing this move because it allows me the d five square, which I'm gladly going to exploit. And I think this might have been somewhat inaccurate. Um at least positionally on his side. So let's continue applying some pressure. And let's see what he does next. He just blunders a knight. Wow. Yeah, that was not very impressive showing by Mr. Ewer. So let's immediately re-enter the pool. And um, I will try to remember where I left off in my discussion. Um, I guess it was just an enumeration of, of what, how you can benefit when you're playing Blitz. Um, besides everything else, it, it's really fun. And I think uh, psychologically, emotionally, if you, if you have a busy life and you want a way to unwind, Blitz is one of the best devices to do just that. And I'm so grateful for the game of chess, not only because of the professional success that it's brought me, but also because um, I'm able to... to to unwind by playing blitz, and in in my opinion, that's a very valuable um, that's a very valuable thing to have. I have a way to blow off steam um, when when I'm so inclined to do so, and uh, I think it's always important to have uh, to have these things. For some people, it's soccer or sports. I like sports as well, but chess. Uh, there's no substitute uh, for chess in terms of uh, in terms of blowing off steam. <laughs> So let's see, let's go back home and see. I'll try to re-exit and then re-enter the pool. Sometimes that speeds up the, the pairing process. I guess I might play some bullet as well. Um, but for now, let's let's stick to blitz. Um, if you you know wait long enough, there's uh, there's usually going to be an opponent. So let's wait for the pairing. Yeah. So, what can I say? Blitz is, uh, you know, I, I really can't imagine what people did before the internet existed because uh, you don't have access to Blitz. You can't just log in online and and start a game. And if if you live somewhere that's fairly isolated and you don't have access to a lot of chess players, then you might go yeah, a year without playing a Blitz game. And to me, that's quite a traumatic uh, thought to even bear. <laughs> um, of course, it's taking a while now, but at least, um, at least I'm getting paired and I'm getting some games. And imagine, uh, if you're getting impatient, imagine not having access to the internet at all and not being able to play Blitz at all. So, let's see. This is taking an abnormally long time to pair me. This is the challenge list. Game there we started. go. As soon as I say it, we get paired. This is going to be a longer five-minute game, so we can really take our time and try to play uh, objectively very well. So I'm in the mood for King's Indian. Let's play King's Indian. It's the opening of my youth. Seems he'll play the Averbach variation. Knight a6 is my move against it. Queen d2, and I believe here queen e8 is the theory. Yeah, knight of 3 5. This all seems familiar. Let's see if I can remember. What the heck I looked at? <laughs> I think it's knight c5, and the idea is he he can take on f6 and play b4 and chase away my knight, but 
I've gotten his bishop, which will be a very important gain, so it'll be a case of tit for tat. Yeah, that's interesting. There's a there's a fire in nearby Oakland, California. I got a notification because I'm close by. <laughs> so let's see. A five. I can play a five to stop before. Let's do let's do that. Yeah, it's a decent position. Nine b five. So. Threatening to take this pawn. Uh, it's not a huge problem. I can play queen d7 or queen d8. Usually the move here is queen d8 because I'm, now I'm threatening h6. So he's still kind of, yeah, he has to defend the pawn. Um, let's chase away the bishop, see where, where he goes. Okay, bishop e3. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have just immediately played c6. <laughs> but it's not a big tragedy either way. Chasing with the knight. Okay, he takes. Interesting. I'm a bit surprised. This doesn't seem very good because now I can play 96 and I can penetrate, uh, potentially penetrate the d4 uh, the d4 square. So he might end up in a little bit of trouble here. So let's see what he does. Knight of three. I was expecting it, and my intention here was to play knight g4. A very common idea in the King's Indian, by the way. You have this knight on f6, and sometimes um, you can play knight g4. Woo! You can. Woo, I'm too excited. You can play knight g4 with very great effect. He's given away this bishop, and I got this incredibly juicy square now on c5. But let's not rush to to conclusions. Let's let's think here. I can play knight c5 immediately. Now the issue with that, what might be queen d2 attacking the pawn. Uh, I can play queen b6 and sack, and then I can maybe develop a very quick attack um, along, uh, along the dark squares. I realize now that I missed this move knight a4, which might be potentially annoying. He plays it, nicely done, and he might actually force me to trade knights, which is highly undesirable, but if I move back, he goes c5, so I, I think I have no choice. Yeah, knight, knight c5 was impulsive, and... If I had to identify one of my biggest weaknesses in Blitz, it's probably impulsivity. I tend to get excited about certain developments, and then I might uh, mess something up because of that. But no, nothing tragic happened. I'm still better. Um, definitely still better. And um, let's see what happens. D2. Should be six. Okay, let's develop. Interesting stuff. Rook fb8, queen a3 is obviously his intention, but in that case, I have an idea. I, mean, I, I can go rook b4. Yeah, that's exactly what happens, and I can sack this pawn. I don't think, excuse me, I don't think it's the end of the world if, um, if I give back the pawn. Yeah, so. Should I say? Yeah, and my idea here was actually to take on c4. Which is, I realize, might be quite surprising. Take c4, my idea is rook takes a8. Uh, bishop takes e2, and then bishop takes d1. It looks good, let's try it. Bishop takes c4. The only thing I'm concerned about is queen c3 in this position. But, yeah, queen c3 might be a bit annoying, but in that case, and if he finds it, nicely done. Um, in that case, my intention was to play either king g7, although that might allow some annoying stuff when I take c5. My second idea is to play queen b5, this is what I will do. Um, and now he can't take on c4 because of the pin. He might go a3 though, which would be somewhat problematic. See if he finds it. He does not. Okay. Oh, so his idea is to play knight d7. Yeah, that might be an issue. And he wants to just checkmate me there. 
Okay, let's try to find an antidote. So the idea is bishop takes c2, knight d7. Yeah, it looks like I can just resign. Uh, it's not here, Rook takes a fade. Yeah, I really messed up, I was much better. Knight e5 is an amazing move. Yeah, I don't even have an option. Let's no uh, takes. He just takes back. Time warning. Okay, you'll see. Rook takes. I fade, of course, but check. Yeah, of course, immediately. Check. And it takes a few seconds before capturing my queen. I wonder why. <laughs> Check. Interesting. Yeah, he's playing the most precise moves on every move. Check. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah, so this one I really completely screwed up. But um, I would think I was better somewhere here. I should have just played queen e7 instead of launching for this, going for this absolutely foolish combination. Queen b6, queen c5. I still thought I was doing well and I completely blundered and I take c5. Just completely. Um, yeah, I should have taken the queen, played bishop f8. Game started. So let's get our revenge. Let's try to checkmate this guy. Okay, here it's. Okay. Yeah, I think this might be theory, but I don't know, of course. <laughs> castle, castle. Generally, in this position, white's slightly better. Um, but it is very, it's called the Gurgenidze system, named after Georgian GM, but it's very solid for black, so it's it's generally hard to break through immediately. But I like these positions for white. They're dynamic. They offer uh, good winning chances, so I can't complain about the result of the opening. Of course, I couldn't complain in last game either, but still didn't quite work out. That's okay. So let's see what he does in this position. G4. And knight d4, yeah, this is my idea. I'm attacking two pawns simultaneously. Now he's also attacking. Uh, he's also attacking. So he's also attacking the pawn on f4. Let's defend it. Okay, he also defends the pawn. He's threatening. Nah, he's not threatening anything, actually. So why don't we. Bring this knight back to f2. Okay. 
and to f3. So he's got some good play going on the queen side, but I've got reciprocal play on the king side, so I can't say I'm unhappy here. Let's go a4. Why am I keep grabbing the b pawn? Let's go a4. Trying to undermine his pawn structure a little bit. Interesting, g5. So he wants me to. Okay, let's just take on b5 first and then see what he does. He takes back. So takes, 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 takes with his knight, and my queen is saying queen takes b5, gf is very strong for him. Um, so somehow my tactics aren't as sharp as I'd like them to be here, but that's fine. We'll survive. Let's go to h3 and try to create some chances on the king side because he has weakened with g5. He has weakened his king side, so it's it's a double-edged sword to some to some degree. C4, interesting. Uh, he keeps advancing, but he is also weakening the d4 square. So let's try to penetrate and see where that leads us. Okay, it's double. Very interesting position. I want to get a long time, of course, but Queen D8, he's threatening. Okay, I guess semi-threatening queen to b6, so let's prevent that threat from... Let's prevent him from even thinking about it further. I'm playing queen e3. Wow. Going to g6. Also a very interesting idea, but... Why don't I just go knight d4? What's wrong with this one? I actually saw this and I thought I would go. Wait a minute, I can just take this free knight. <laughs> Check. Queen g3, queen d1, king g2. Knight g6, rook g7. Nice, I think this is winning. Check. Yeah, rook g7 at the end, or even knight e6, there's. Aha, uh -huh, knight e6, queen e2. Uh, let's do it. So if, even if queen takes c2 check, I can just cover with the knight on f2, and he's out of checks, and everything is collapsing. So, looks quite good for me. Check. Yeah, he decides to take the pawn, but I think his position is beginning to collapse here. Okay, he gives back a second piece. Check. And I can just do this without thinking any further. And it's important in Blitz not to overthink it. If you see a win, you know, go for it and you resign. So, a nice game. Um, it was a decent comeback, I thought, from the disaster in last game. Uh, it was kind of this Gorgonidza system. I made the decision of taking with a deep on creating an imbalance. Uh, hopefully that word uh, is familiar by now. Creating a, a central pawn imbalance and um, using the initiative, which is another... And maneuvering and <laughs> peace placement, which are other terms you're probably well aware of by now. Um, I was able to get um, a nice piece superiority and at some point his, his position just collapsed after 94. I think that h8 was too passive and too slow and here I just calculated out the win and taking all of his pieces so he decided to resign. So I'm hoping to get uh, not this opponent again but the previous one so we can get our revenge. I think his name was, uh, his handle was Invincibility. And he has indeed proven himself Game to be invincible. No, we're playing an international master from, I think this flag is El Salvador, if I'm not wrong, uh, Lilienstein. So let's play Sicilian uh, Nidorf. I, I, I'm feeling nostalgic for my youth, you know. I, I For some reason, I really want to recreate the openings I used to play. Okay, let's go e5. And knight 2. I think the move is b5 here. It should be 7. And knight bd7, should be 7, I don't know, this doesn't 
strike me as particularly impressive for him. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is usually these positions are fine for black. C4, wow. So he seems to know what he's doing. I, I don't see why this is that good for white. Usually I can just go a5 and then start. Yeah, he's playing very quickly, but I think quite poorly, to be honest with you. <laughs> Which are uh, sometimes go together. Queen b6, let's ensconce a queen on c5. Uh, he'll want to trade it probably, but I'm not against. I'm not really against an endgame, to be honest with you. I don't see why I should be. With such nice bishops, uh, I guess f4 is a bit annoying. But I can go, uh huh. So he wants to take. Let's see. Maybe I was a bit rash, as as I usually am. Um, let's go bishop a6. Maybe just treading water for now. And potentially stopping him from taking on e5 and following up with d6. Let's see what he does now. Okay, rook c2, not. Nothing extraordinary, let's put it this way. Um, I like to move g5 here. Let's ask him some questions. And um, we're doing well on time, so I can afford to slow down a little bit. Knight c1, he's transferring the knight to d3. Let's stop him from doing that. He's going, but now he's going back to d4 and trying to be very annoying. So I'm going to play... Ah, I'm... Oh, I guess I, you know, I blundered fg and rook takes f5, but against fg I, I now have rook takes d5, so rook takes d5 was my idea, and I got some notification apparently. <laughs> but I didn't see it in this particular iteration, just happened to be there. So rook takes d5 is a nice little resource. I've succeeded in unbalancing the position, which I really like. I mentioned, I think, in the chapter on imbalances, imbalances that... Um, Generally, one thing that separates GMs from um, non-GMs is is their ability to play with imbalances on the board and kind of a feel for which imbalance is stronger and, and how to handle these more unorthodox positions. And I do consider this to be one of my strengths. Now, having said all of this and having been arrogant like this, I need to actually prove my worth. He's played h4, uh, protecting the pawn. Let's... Go. Draw offer. Okay, it's offering me a draw, which I'm not going to accept in either case, even if I were worse, because it's not worth taking draws and blitz generally, so unless the position is dead drawn. If there is play involved, it's not worth chickening out usually. So I have an interesting idea, okay? Let's go rook d3, sacking the spawn, and then I'm going to go d5. I'm going to apply some pressure on his position, and we'll see what he can come up with. And this is a classic blitz resource. It's you know, maybe I would have done this in a real game, but probably Check. not. But in a blitz game, it just looks very interesting. So I'm gonna just go for it. Most of my pawns are collapsing, but if I can promote one of them, that will be more than enough to win the game. So let's see what he does in this position. That was a weird mix of an Armenian and French accent. Entirely unintentional. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, rook a5 is concerning. Cb. What Check. is the? Okay, we're equal material actually for the moment. Yeah, this is strong, but now I can go back to d8 and push this pawn and try to somehow promote. Let's see. Uh, bishop b7 is a semi-threat. Wow, that's very brave. You know, I have an amazing idea. To play bishop b7 here. Don't laugh at me. Knight takes e7. I go king f7, okay? Are you following me? 
Bishop b7, knight e7, king f7, rook d8, bishop takes e4. I'm down a full rook, threatening to promote. And if he goes rook d1, I play king takes e7. Wow. Wow. I need to go for this. This is too much. This is, this is, if this works, it's going to be insane. So again, my idea is knight takes e7 is basically forced, I think, because rook takes d8, bishop takes d8 as a pin. Um, but if he takes, I play king f7. Now, if he takes my bishop or something like that, I promote. His rook is hanging, so he's got to take my rook. Then I take his bishop, and I'm again threatening to promote. He doesn't have any shenanigans with his knights. He's got to go back. I take on e7. I'm not quite out of the woods yet because he has it past pawns, but it should be it, sh it should be winning, yeah. It should be winning. King g1, yeah, I, th I think it's winning. Wow, wow. So let's see if this works. If, if this works, it'll be awesome. So let's, let's see here, let's get comfortable and see what happens. Hmm. <laughs> He's probably flabbergasted at this point. Um, it's, it's a nice demonstration of the power of past pawns in the end game. And hopefully you are cognizant of that as Check. well. And he decides to bite the bullet and go for it. Precisely according to our calculations, should take c4, and rook d1 is forced, king takes c7, and he just resigns, so this, this worked out perfectly. Um, so I'm very glad I played the knight roof. And again, being able to play with imbalances on the board and calculating on your feet and seeing ideas like bishop b7, that is what um, you should aspire to, because it's, it's not like this is an extraordinary idea. I think it's nice. But it's not extraordinary. I'm using, I'm trying to root out the bishop, and that's the, the bottom line. And I think some players would rule it out because he takes on e7 with check. But what I'm looking at here is not the fact that he took on e7 with check, it's that, hey, I have a passed pawn, um, and hey, I'm, I'm destroying, I'm going to capture this bishop on e4. And if I do that, then the fact that I have a passed pawn on b2 is transcending everything else. Now that he, he has an extra rook, but that doesn't really matter because this passed pawn is going to promote. Um, and, and ideas like these are, are I think, the mark of, of, you know, being able to find ideas like these on demand is what really um, helped me make the push from, from IM to, to Grandmaster. So the opening here went quite well. Uh, it was a regular night off. I think I, I went into the end game too soon. And of course, he could have improved somewhere. But um, yeah, this was a really, this was a good game. Um, and I managed to avenge myself for the loss two games ago. Uh, somewhat. I'm still still reeling a little bit, but uh, I'm at, at least uh, at least I know I can still win games. So let's see who we get next. Um, generally, uh, I I do encourage you to talk aloud when you're playing Blitz for what it's worth. I don't think anybody will follow this advice, but I've tried it before. Um, imagine that you're stream. Imagine that you're in my shoes and you're making a video and whatever you you're making a stream, and you have to describe your thought process. And sometimes, when that happens, it allows you to catch certain illogicalities and certain um, tendencies in your thinking process when you verbalize it. And it's a little bit weird and cumbersome at first, but I have actually done it. I have sat down before in my favorite armchair and and played blitz without, you know, stream without making a video and, and actually talk myself through my thought process. And I found myself winning game after game because, uh, again, I was forcing myself to calculate. I was stating my calculations aloud. And in that way, it, it created, um, it created this incentive to calculate more and to, and to win more games. And I do occasionally stream online as well. So I think that's a very interesting way of improvement. I think it's quite under underestimated. And it's funny, I haven't gotten paired yet in all that time. But um, now I will, I, will, I will talk about one more topic, and we'll probably have time for you know, one or two more games. Um, and that topic starts with a B, and it's not Blitz, and it's not Bug House, but rather it's Bullet. Now, uh, for the uninitiated, and I think most of you know or have a sense of what Bullet Chess is, if you do not, that's that's great, actually, and you don't even think about playing it. Bullet is um, considered, I think, generally considered to be any anything uh, below uh, two minutes per player or below, 
usually one minute. One minute is the most common bullet time control. And I might play one bullet game at the end to just shoot, game prove started. the point, and we actually have started a game. So let's once again play E2, E4 here, and I will finalize this conversation after this game ends. We've got ourselves a nice little Ray Lopez going here. Castle, B5, Bishop C5. So this is... Um, very common line uh, sideline in the Rayo Lopez. Three, four, I think the move is takes. Knight a3, knight takes b5, bishop c2. And a, if you are following top level chess, you might recognize this from Carlson Karyakin. One of their games reached this position. I don't remember if he took an f3, I don't think he did. And again, if I'm not wrong here, the move is f4. And I think this is the reason why black players do not usually play this line anymore because of f4 and i'm giving back the pawn with interest because i'm going to get my queen out to, to g4 and um yeah let's see apparently this comes as a surprise time we plays queen h4 um i think the move is queen f3 here i think this is still theory And if he takes on f4, then I'm probably going to take back. Oh, he takes on d4. Ooh. Is e5 the move here? I really don't remember, but let's just go for it. I, I have mostly played one d4 in the past few months, so I'm, um, of course, very rusty on my 1e4 theory. I'm, I'd be actually quite curious to know if this is a theoretical continuation or not. I'd be somewhat impressed with myself for being able to find it for a change. But something in me is highly doubtful that this is indeed <clears throat> that this is indeed a theoretical continuation. So let's see what he does. Ninety seven. So he 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 retreats. <clears throat> um what shall we gobble? Let's take with the knight, of course, because I, I don't want to keep the knight off sides, and I'd rather take a slight uh, defect in pawn structure over having the knight off sides. Now, if he takes on e5 and takes on d4, I'll take back, and he can't take again because the knight on h5 is hanging. It's an important detail uh, to, to bear in mind. Otherwise, one of my ideas might be to play rook a4, and he I feel like he's missing the fact that he can't take, or maybe he's just going for this voluntarily. And it looks like the opening has not particularly gone his way here. Rook before. So nice move. He's uh, attacking this pawn. He wants to take it with his rook, of course. Um, what can we propose here for white? And at some point, it's even in blitz, it's important to slow down, especially if you have time, and really soak in the flavors of the position. Because if you rush through life, if you rush through blitz, you won't extract any of the positive benefits from it. So my first inclination is to play bishop b3, sack this pawn on b2, play rook ac1, and just claim an advantage because of my two bishops. Alternatively, I can go rook d1, but I prefer development over... Uh, greediness, even though in this particular instance maybe greediness would have been more rewarded. So let's see how he decides to proceed. Knight g6. Okay, he wants to potentially, I guess, go to f4. How can we... Ooh, I see an interesting idea. If I go like this, go, go attack his back rank. And one of my ideas in this position might be actually to take on g6. Okay, nice. So this is a big concession on his end allowing the rook trade and withdrawing his rook from a very active square in b4. Um, and I like what I just saw, so I'm just going to repeat that idea with rook a1. I guess he can take on b2, but I'm highly doubtful that something like that might work. Let's see what he does here. I still got plenty of time, so if something pops up, you know, I can I'm, I can afford to spend a few minutes thinking about it. Let's 
let's see how he decides to proceed. <laughs> yeah, it's an un 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 unenviable situation for my opponent. Completely paralyzed, but so is the lifestyle of a 1e5 player. Such is the lifestyle, I should say. He took. And I was actually, Check. while I was talking, I was calculating a nice idea, and that is to play e6 in this position. Of course, if he takes, then I take with checkmate. Otherwise, I'm threatening queen takes f7. And I think he is completely uh, lost. And I'll say that word with a nice Russian twang. I think he is lost in this position because this pawn is absolutely unstoppable. So, let's see if he resigns or if he chooses to resign or not. Queen e7. So, let's see um, what we can do here. I think I can take. I can even take with a queen and play something with bishop takes h7, Check. but I don't think it's worth it. Let's just take, and this Check. is a crushing blow. I'm winning this queen. Uh, take the queen. Check. He's still playing on. But not so long, because this is checkmate. And um, we got time for a quick one, so let me enter the bullet pool as well. And I will. I might end up playing one bullet. <laughs> Game started. And we repair it immediately, so perfect. I mean, we're playing international master Roman Jankowski, who I actually played in a real life game in uh, a few years ago. E forty five B three, interesting line. Um, let's meet it with pure development. G three, okay. Let's go H five. You know, and I'm I'm tired of his. I'm tired of this crap. Let's let's see what he. Let's see what he's truly made of. Um, Let's just go a little bit wild here at the outset. H4. And I'm not really thinking here. I'm doing exactly what I said I should not, or you should not, which is play impulsively. But, uh, you know, professionals can afford uh, some stuff that uh, mere mortals cannot. And I'm, ooh, I just blundered that pawn. <laughs> oh my goodness. And. Ooh, this might actually... Okay, folks, I blundered that pawn, didn't sacrifice it, but it might actually turn out in my favor because now the h-file is opened, so his king might be in quite a little bit of danger. Um, so let's see what happens. This is this is too wild for, for... This is just disgusting. Let's go d5, maybe. Takes, bishop h3, bishop h3. Takes, takes, uh, takes f2 there is interesting, but... Somehow I'm doubtful that something like that will truly work out. So let's go. Let's go. Hmm. Let's go d5 anyway. I don't care. <laughs> if we lose this game, at least we'll we'll go out in some style. And if not, it'll be immortalized in history forever. So my idea here is to play 95, but. Okay, this might backfire, but I think it's interesting. Knight of four. Let's go like this. Trap his knight. <laughs> D four. Beautiful counterattacking shot. And I think I'm just toast here so let's continue in the same spirit that we have played because I really have nothing to lose at this point and who knows I mean it's blitz anything can happen and that's that's the amazing thing about blitz when push comes to shove is really anything can happen in any kind of position so FG is one possibility sacking the knight um, takes here maybe Mm, knight g4, knight takes e4, bishop e4. What else can we think of here? Fg, hg takes takes. Mm. Okay, let's focus here.
9484 is annoying. Let's check. Sec. Check. Okay, he wants to play knight takes c4 and crush me. It's not very nice of him. <laughs> Last resort stuff. Yeah, this one just didn't go my way. <laughs> it went too crazy in the opening, that h5, h4 crab. But it's still not over. I'm a firm believer in miracles. When it comes to blitz, I've had my fair share. c5? Should I even try that? Takes, queen takes. Yeah. Yeah, this is just over. Yeah, and a good one. So, not a great way to end, but um, mostly one. I lost two games. This one was a disaster. He played this move. I, th I thought after g5 I'm okay because I'm trapping his knight, but he found this incredible resource d4, and after that it just completely backfired. I tried to create some chances, but it, of course it didn't work. So anyways, um, that was a lot of fun, and I think the great thing about Blitz is I did say it, it's all about the result, but it's really not. And no matter how you do, you, you always have a way to have fun. When you learn chess and when you become good, you have a go-to thing to do, and that is to play Blitz. And I hope that you've enjoyed this session as much as I have. And um, I bid you goodbye, and I wish you the best of luck in your Blitz adventures, and hopefully I can get some of my rating back, get revenge on the opponents that I lost to, and um, continue beating the opponents who I beat. So um, thank you for joining me on this uh, fun little journey, and I will see you, hopefully face you, in, uh, in the Blitz Chess Arena.